If you were going to play a PvP, what two units would you get out of your gateways? Two? Oh, yeah, right. for the first two units. <laughs> What's your units? Double stalker. What units represent you? Double stalker. I would double go double stalker. stalker and I'd never stop making stalkers, man. <laughs> Ape. Oh my god. Shouldn't have asked. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> So I got confused when you said two units. I was like, man, I only need one unit. Hey, what do you mean? <laughs> That's if the game goes that long. Uh, Meanwhile, but... we have spawned in at the top left-hand corner of this map. And we do have the blue Protoss playing for South Korea and representing Team NV. It is Nightmare. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Moondance ESL. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. We have the <laughs> the French Protoss player himself representing Alpha X. It is Arrowfire. Did you just start to do like a little bit of a French accent for Alpha X? <laughs> <laughs> I did what no. <laughs> that was just my voice. <laughs> What do you mean? Alpha X? <laughs> Alpha X, yeah, what do you mean? Okay, okay, shake, as you were. Shaking my head. Like, I think you're just hearing what you want to hear, okay? Shaking the head. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was a little bit distracted. I was just making sure that predictions were open in the chat. So you can place your bets on who is going to be able to take this series in the end. We're going to try and set up predictions for both semis and the finals. Ooh, but uh, yeah, we'll see how things go here as Arrowfire has a bit of a cheeky probe on the map. Yeah, this scouting probe did get a little bit lost along the way on Moondance and has found a nice little corner for itself. Yeah, he has. Unfortunately, he is abandoning that corner, so it looks like he's only throwing down a fake proxy pylon. Oh, feels bad. Feels bad. Yeah, I have played one game on this map against Protoss, and these corner bases up in the bottom left and the top right, they're actually really annoying to scout. They're really far out of the way, and there's a lot of area and like dead space in them that you can hide stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm already seeing there's a lot of cheeky spots where you can hide things on this map. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and we can see Nightmare immediately, he's trying to look for that pylon, you know, he went for the full scout, he saw that the second pylon was missing, which means that the possibility of a proxy is very real. He's even sending a second probe out here just to try and hunt it down. Yeah, Nightmare doing his diligence, just trying to scour the map for this uh, pylon in case it is in fact a proxy. We do see him going again for this double stalker into double adept player. Oh, yeah, he did this against Chance. He plans to do it again here against Arrow Fire. Meanwhile, Arrow Fire staying on one base and taking up a little bit further here in a bit of a different direction. We see him throw down a Robo and a second gateway, which is incredibly aggressive. Meanwhile, Nightmare with more standard play going for a Stargate. Yeah, we do see Arrow Fire going for the three gate Robo here, which is actually the only build that I know in PvP. <laughs> He's, he's playing like you, Asher. He's playing, he's playing like you. He must the have Asher. been inspired. <laughs> he must have been inspired. <laughs> yeah, Asher. At the same time, <laughs> I do like that he has the sentry as well, just for a bit of extra scouting and to possibly throw uh, Nightmare a little bit off the scent of what is going on here. So he does kind of open up as if he's going for a bit more of a standard macro game, but it is a very all-in attack that he's going for here. Oh yeah, it is anything but macro. Here we go, the Adepts try to shade on in. We see a full wall up here by Arrow Fire, so Nightmare is still in the dark. He did end up finding that proxy pylon, so he knows there's no proxy out on the map. His mind can be at ease, but it should be anything but at ease, because again, Arrow Fire is staying on one base, as he is going all-in. Yeah, this is actually a really annoying pylon for Arrow Fire to lose. He will be slightly supply-blocked by this, and as he sends out this uh, warp prism, he does have to leave a few stalkers in the main, possibly anticipating an oracle as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he did scout the oracles earlier. He has to deal with these adepts as well. Looking to be a little bit annoying. The adepts are still alive, but here we go. The army is pushing out across that nice forest field. He catches two stalkers. Yeah, catches two stalkers with that force field, but does pay himself with one stalker and does lose the sentry as well. So uh, nice micro coming out there from Nightmare that will help him a lot defending this. 
it really will. Meanwhile, a second shield battery is on the way at the natural base. What's important is that because we have a war prism, we don't have to commit into a fight at the natural. We could try and sneak into the main base, but Nightmare is already thinking about that. He has some anti-air. He has a void ray. Yeah, and the void ray will help a lot with these stalkers. Already looking like a very good situation for Nightmare. Oh. And this fight going well, but the void ray goes down. Yeah, nice target fire there by Arrow Fire Nightmare, overextending a little bit too far out, not being supported by those shield batteries. We'll lose, his, we'll lose that first Void Ray. We do have a second coming out though, so again, he's still looking to try and zone out that War Prism if there ever is an opportunity for Arrow Fire to go into the main. Yeah, maybe getting a little bit ahead of himself here, taking that fight away from the shield batteries, but he still is okay for now, using the Void Rays just to zone out that Prism if it does choose to rotate. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, we do have the Overcharge being popped. Is it going to be good enough? Because in two volleys, we do see another Stalker going down, but oh, it loses a little bit too much in the process. So far, Nightmare is holding on. Another Stalker gets sniped from the side of Arrow Fire. Yeah, the Stalker count starting to get into that dangerous territory where he's and start to one-shot units underneath the batteries, uh, which will be the scariest moment in the defense for Nightmare. Well, exactly, we'll see if he can get there. Oh my god, missed targeting a little bit there. Does, does throw a volley at the Nexus instead. He will still get that uh, Void Ray in the end, but oh god, uh, maybe one too many mistakes. Yeah, it does get it in the end, but that's a lot of Stalkers going down. And a lot of Stalkers in the red here, also using one of the more high health Stalkers to get rid of this uh, uh, Stasis squad at the front. This is looking like a very difficult situation for Arrow Fire to break through. Yeah, boys are being pulled. We do see that he's almost one-shotting these Stalkers of Nightmare, but we have another volley of warp ins. We do have finally that Stasis Trap being um, being let go there, but oh god, Arrow Fire losing so much. He still has the Stalker advantage, just barely. Um, we'll see if we can keep on going. Yeah, warping in a few stalkers there. Good micro with the prism just to save those few stalkers at the front, rotate them towards the back as well. But it's looking very hard for him to break through here. Oh, but he has it. He can one shot. He does one shot two of the stalkers of Nightmare, but forces another overcharge. We have a third shield battery behind this. Nightmare forcing this all the way back. And again, because these stalkers are so low, finally they're starting to fall. Yeah, Nightmare feeling very confident. Brings the fight to Arrow Fire all the way outside the front of his natural. And GG is called in the end. G, well played. Nightmare does successfully defend. Ooh, it was honestly looking pretty good for Arrow Fire in the beginning because he was able to keep things hidden for so long. Um, but it was a shame that he he was forced to keep a lot of his stalkers at home and across the map instead of being aggressive in the beginning. So it, it did give Nightmare a lot of time to prepare. Yeah, absolutely. Nightmare even getting a little bit ahead of himself with the defense, fighting a little bit outside of the batteries, but in the end, his confidence uh, was well founded, and he has a lovely hold to take game one. Oh yeah, yeah, beautiful there, beautiful. And again, I, I appreciate that Arc Fire is one of the more aggressive players. You were talking about it get, coming into this series, where you know the European meta is a little bit different, it's a little bit standard, it's a little bit more boring. But that's anything but boring here in game one, as we saw a one base all in already. How are things going to change as we, you know, dive on in? Uh? Under the sea. <gasps> Under the sea. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> it's great. It's beautiful. Uh, now I have to invest into a Sebastian plushie. I need one here. I thought you were going to say a Sebastian costume. I got a bit excited. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess. <laughs> sure. It's okay. I'll wear the Ariel costume. <laughs> I think we might get banned from Twitch. Oh god. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm still allowed to talk after that. Spawning in the left hand side of the map. It is the blue Protoss playing for Team NV. It is Nightmare. And spawning in the top right hand corner of Data Under the Sea. We have the French Protoss player himself. He is red, representing Alpha X. It is Arrow Fire. I really want that to be like, you know, the trumpet that uh -huh. intros the players. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. You could get that to do the the theme song. <laughs> 
think we'd get copyright striked. I think. <laughs> I think Disney will come for our channel, mate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming for everyone. <laughs> They're coming for everyone. No, I 100% agree. It, it doesn't have to be the whole jingle. Just like. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beautiful. Yeah, meanwhile, we are seeing, once again, pretty similar build coming out from Nightmare that he did use on this map before with the one gate expand. We'll have to wait and see to see if he does in fact throw down that expansion or if he goes for something more aggressive, but it looks like it's Arrow Fire going for something aggressive. Yeah, once again, Arrow Fire wants to turn up the heat here under the sea, mate, and we see the pylon thrown down. This time, the probe sticks around. And the probe will be throwing down a... Robo. Stag it. Yes. <laughs> oh, you cracked me! Let's go! Know? Because it was a short rush, rush. this is by the ground, puppy, by the ground. Uh -huh. If you'll Stargate, it'd be over here, mate, on the left-hand side, right? We are a pro <laughs> yeah, well, you know, no. It's happening. Oh my god, we want Proxy Robot versus Proxy Stargate! Let's go! And he's scouting! Have... Oh my god. Oh, he finds the Robo. I'm here. Oh my god, and he reveals that he knows about the Robo Nightmare. Oh my god, Nightmare even went for it. He went for it at first. He's cracked, mate. I think this might just be GG, but meanwhile, Arrow Fire, the saving grace, does actually find the proxy Ooh. of Nightmare. So uh, it looks like they just cancel their various tech buildings and we're back in some kind of weird normal game. <laughs> Oh my god, we said let's have fun and both players said no as no. <laughs> <laughs> fun is cancelled. Yeah, fun is no fun for you, mate. No fun for you. <gasps> but Nightmare has a proxy pilot in the main base of Arak Fire! For a minute I thought that was Arak Fire in like, <laughs> <laughs> He has a proxy pilot in his own base! <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, both players are expanding. They're both trying to transition. Nightmare is going for a robot of his own. He's also going for a third gateway, so he is looking to be the aggressor here. No shield battery, though. He has to be careful. Yeah, but we do see this warp gate finishing up, so we will have to see if perhaps some adepts are warped across the map. But if he does, it will be a little bit of a difficult defense back here at home. Yeah, he's going to make a hard choice, made a very hard choice because we have four stalkers here from the side of our fire. Where is that warp engine going to go before he gets depowered? Across the map. Yeah, dangerous dance here, but he does end up warping across the map. Warps in three adepts across the map while his gateways are depowered. I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> that's a useless one. I didn't know that works. Yeah, that. there you go. The <laughs> protos, they cracked me. The gateways don't even have to be powered, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, does recall these stalkers as the immortal pops out, seeing that he isn't going to win this fight and he does need to clear out these adepts. Beautiful pile on there to wall the adepts and trap them in, but the shade does. Uh, pins of the units as well. Yeah, you know, are the adepts trapped with you or, you or are you trapped with the adepts, mate? That is the real question. The adepts once again shading towards the main base, forcing Arc Fire to keep the majority here to protect his mineral line. Oh my god, Nightmare commits to the shade anyway. He's just going for more probe kills. Yeah, he does finish the shade. We're seeing 9, 10, 11. Doesn't quite manage to catch the 11th probe, but 10 probes going down already. That is a huge lead already for Nightmare. Oh, exactly. And you know what? Arrow Fire didn't scout. He doesn't know that the pylon is still there. Nightmare, he could just do it again. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I mean, surely he's wondering where those adepts came from. I think he oh, realized. Yeah, he realizes go. now. Oh, he says, the call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> almost seems like Nightmare couldn't believe his luck. Uh, it took him a little while to go for that second warp in, but. Uh, not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. Does there, try to go for it. There you go, there you go. Nightmare was trying to take advantage of that situation, but Arak Fire a little bit too good for that. He is not gonna be one of those murder victims in. Oh my god, he doesn't get the purpose to one! He's <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> what? Oh no! It's still in the house, puppy! It's still in the house! <laughs> 
Wait, the call was coming from inside the house because it was coming from you. You made the call, puppy. You made the call. Oh, the announcer coming back in. Not like this. Oh. I just kind of want to see. I wish I could see his reaction here. Yeah. As the adept's coming, he's like, I thought you had to have a pylon to do that. <laughs> It's like, was, is, there, is there a second pilot? What, what is just happening? Did I dream that I killed the first pilot? What's going on? As the Adept shade in, more workers are going down. Arrow Fire tried to blink into the main base of Nightmare, but Nightmare was ready and waiting for him. The Stalkers so far have done no damage. It says, if that's your base, and this is your base, and where's my base? <laughs> what even is real anymore? I don't know. <laughs> GG. An Arog fire finding himself in a nightmare under uh, Dusty. <laughs> finding himself homeless in a nightmare under the sea. Any, everything going wrong, wrong could go wrong. That was insane what Nightmare was able to pull off. To bearing in, in mind, though, that again, the way that that series even started was a proxy versus a proxy, where both of them got scattered and both denied. Like, that was, that was a wild game. Yeah, that was absolutely insane. I'm kind of watching the stream with the delay now just to see where that probe actually was hiding because I have no idea. Yeah, I can't I can't actually see on the stream where the probe is. Yeah, I guess it's just I have it's, no I idea how it's just, he hit it. Yeah, I guess it's just towards the bottom right. Like I, I wasn't looking there because I didn't yeah, I guess it's just chilling there. Yeah, I think he somehow managed to tuck it down yeah. right into the corner of it. Yeah, that was insane. That was absolutely insane. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm kind of speechless. That's one of those things where... I guess you have these moments in StarCraft where... You see this crazy move. And you can kind of think of it as like a Bronze League move or a Pro move. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, it doesn't really happen anywhere in the middle. Because we're all really try hard in Diamond and we don't do things that, you know, quote unquote, don't work. But then you see people at the highest level then will go for these crazy strats that you wouldn't expect. Like hiding a pylon in the main and warping in adepts. Which is, you know, something that you kind of expect once you're out of Platinum. Like you're just never going to see it again. But yeah, it's extremely effective and on top of all the stuff that's happening constantly in that game uh just manages to be the deciding factor <laughs> it was crazy puppy it was crazy uh gg well played what a wild semi-finals my heart goes out to arrow fire because looking at the looking at the brackets he was the last remaining european player i am shocked art who is usually a mainstay in the top four was denied entry there. Lunacy advances on instead. Congratulations. Yeah. Great result there for Lunacy, causing slight upset, I would say, but that's great for him to get the 2-0 over Art. It does go on now to face Demi.